Welcome back designers. This is going to be installment number two of my Illustrator Certification Test video tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going over several of the multiple choice questions you may expect to see on the 2023 version of the Adobe Illustrator test. I'm going to go over five different skills that you'll either need to perform or need to demonstrate when you take the multiple choice version of the test which includes roughly between 10 to 12 questions. If you would like to see more content related to Adobe Illustrator certification or Adobe certification in general, please check out the link at the bottom description bar in this video, which is gonna take you to my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, where you can access further certification materials, including practice files and individualized video tutorials. But without further ado, let us go and get started so you can also pass Illustrator like a pro. To start off with, we're going to take a look at several of the typographic tools that you're going to be expected to know for the Adobe Illustrator certification test. If you're interested in any of these practice files, please check out the study guide that I linked for you for my TPT store, which is going to include several of these practice files and video tutorials to assist you. But for now, let me take a look at some of the typographic tools that you're going to be expected to either identify or demonstrate in one of the simulation-based tasks. We can easily find our type tool because it looks like a capital T in our toolbar. If I right-click on the type tool, I have several different ways that I can alternate my use of typographic tools on Illustrator. But I'm going to leave it at the default, which is the horizontal type tool. And with the horizontal type tool, I can either click anywhere in the document, it's going to go and add some placeholder text. Or if I have a defined space, I can use my type tool and drag out a text box, which is going to fill automatically with placeholder text. Don't worry about what this says, it's complete and total gibberish whose only purpose is to show you what the text looks like when you add it to your document. The cool thing about point type is that I can basically go and change it and it's going to alter automatically with me as I go and drag out the text box to enlarge it or make it smaller. So you can see that I'm going and making this text box into a tight column and you can see how all of the, take, all of the text inside the text box is adjusted automatically so I don't have to go in and adjust any of the flow of the text. It does it automatically for me. Yes, there's going to be a little reminder down here that the text is overset, meaning that some of the text is cut off. But for the purposes of the certification test, you will not be asked to edit any overset text. In addition to working with point text, you may also be asked to work with area text. What this means is that instead of going and dragging out a text box, which is usually rectangular in nature, you're going to be asked to input text inside of a shape similar to this hexagon. In order to look for area type, I'm going to click on the three little dots at the bottom of my toolbar. I'm going to go under type and I'm going to select area type, which is the second from the left. This will allow me to place text inside of a given shape. I'm going to make sure that the shape is selected first. Then, using area type, I'm going to go and drag my cursor to the edge of the shape. And when I click on the edge of the shape, you guys are going to see that the entire shape of the hexagon is going to be filled with text. The actual fill of the hexagon is no longer visible because it's really, literally only a container for the text itself. We can try that as well with a different shape. So I'm going to create an ellipse. With the ellipse selected, I'm going right back down to the bottom of the toolbar, selecting those three dots, using area type, and then I'm going to drag my cursor with the area type tool to the edge of the ellipse, click, and it's going to fill automatically with placeholder text in the shape of a circle. So that is area type for you. You will also be asked to demonstrate knowledge of type on a path, both in the multiple choice and in the simulation based questions. Type on a path means that the type is going to go along the length of a line or a curve. 
So as you can see, I made this zigzag and I want a line of text to go along the length of the zigzag. I can right click on my type tool, select type on a path, drag it to the edge of this path, click, and as you can see, all of the placeholder text is going to go along with the edges of this line. Lastly, you're going to be asked to demonstrate the use of text wrap, both in the multiple choice and in the simulation based part of the test. Text wrap means that you're basically taking the text and wrapping it around some kind of shape or image. So as you can see, this flower is right on top of the text, but I want the text to flow around the flower, similar to what you might see in a storybook. So I'm actually going to go and use my selection tool so I can drag a marquee over both the text and the flower. And I know they're both selected because they have these blue bounding boxes around them. And to show you text wrap, I'm going to go to the object menu, scroll all the way down, select text wrap, and make. Click OK. And you guys will see that now the text is positioned beautifully around the flower and leaving enough space so that it doesn't look crowded. It looks kind of like the intro to a storybook. So these are just four of the different multiple choice questions that you guys may expect to see. It's either going to ask you to define either of these typographic tools or show you an image of them and you're going to have to figure out which of these tools was used to create the sample image shown on the test. On the Illustrator certification test, you're also going to be asked to demonstrate knowledge of different drawing tools within Illustrator. So we're going to be taking a look at three distinct tools that you're going to be asked to identify in the multiple choice part of the test. The first is going to be the pen tool. I'm going to zoom in on the very first artboard here so we can talk about different things that you can do with the pen tool. The pen tool is going to be the third from the top in our Essentials workspace. And with our pen tool, we can create open paths similar to this zigzag that I made up here and closed paths like this arrow down here. To create an open path, all you have to do is set the fill to none. And I'm just going to increase the stroke size to about four points so that it's visible. And we can just click and start plotting anchor points that are going to connect automatically with line segments anywhere that I drag on this artboard. In order to close my path, I have to click Escape, and it's going to exist as an open path all of its own. To create a closed path, similar to this arrow, you have to click to create your first anchor point, drag, keep dragging, and then connect the anchor points with the very first point that you started by clicking it, and it's going to exist as a shape of its own, which you're able to then fill with any one given color. In order to edit any one given shape or any one open path, you need to use the Direct Selection tool. The direct selection tool is the second from the top of your, of your toolbar in the Essentials workspace. The direct selection tool looks like a white arrow. And with the sele direct selection tool, you can basically click on any one of the anchor points in the path, and you can adjust them by making them maybe closer, dragging them out to make them more elongated, or you can even go and make the corners rounded. So as you can see, this is a very sharp angular corner. If I actually go and click on the widget, this little circle right next to the anchor point, I can actually go and make that corner entirely rounded and make that look a little bit more like a heart. If I wanna go and make that more extreme, I can double click on this anchor point and drag to make the angles a little bit more pointed and a little more dramatic. So the direct selection tool is basically going to enable us to edit either of the anchor points on an open or closed path, 
as we see fit. You'll also be asked to identify what the Add Anchor Point tool does. This one is going to be a little bit hidden on our Essentials workspace, so to find it, you have to click on the three little dots at the bottom of the toolbar, go under Drawing, and it's going to look like a pen tool with a plus sign next to it. The Add Anchor Point tool, just like the name implies, allows us to add anchor points. So if I wanted to have another ankle, right about over here, I can click with the Add Anchor Point tool. It adds an anchor point so that using my direct selection tool from earlier, I can go and edit out that shape and make it even more complex. So let's say I want to try the same thing with this side right here. I can go back, select the Add Anchor Point tool, click anywhere in that shape, and then using my direct selection tool, edit the anchor points out further. So in summary, you need to identify the pen tool. The pen tool is allowing us to create both shapes and open paths. It can also be used to create curves. The direct selection tool, which allows us to edit any of the anchor points we make with the pen tool. And the add anchor point tool, which will enable us to add even more anchor points to any one open and closed path so that we can further edit them as we see fit. One of the questions on the multiple choice part of the test is going to have you identify what formats are available when you try to export any illustration on Illustrator. So we're gonna test that out now by going to File, Export, and Export As. From here, we have several different raster formats or pixel-based formats that we can select from, including PNG, BMP, and JPEG. If I wanted to print this file, I would want to select Adobe PDF. I could also edit this file further in Photoshop by exporting it as a Photoshop or PSD file. And if I wanted it to exist as a vector file, I could export it to an SVG format, in addition to multiple other formats available. So it's going to show you a drop down menu of the different formatting options that are available when you try to export your file. Definitely keep in mind the different raster options, such as, such as PNG and JPEG, in addition to printing options such as PDF and vector based options such as SVG, in addition to Adobe specific file such as PSD. One question specifically is going to ask you how you can print multiple artboards on one page. Illustrator famously allows you to create multiple artboards so that you can work on different parts of an illustration across different pages, but every now and then you may be asked to print multiple parts of the illustration on just one letter size page, for example. So let's test that out by going to File and Print. I have three artboards. If I want each part of the illustration on a separate page, then I would want to go and select Artboards All. And then page one is going to have Artboard 1, page two is going to have Artboard 2, and so forth. But if I want all the illustrations on one page, I would have to click the option that says Ignore Artboards. You're going to need to go and adjust the different parts of the illustration accordingly, but by selecting Ignore Artboards, then all parts of the illustration are going to print perfectly within one page. So when it asks you to identify which of these options you should select in order to print multiple artboards in one letter size page, you need to click where it says Ignore Artboards so that you can get full points. The last topic that we're going to be reviewing today is what options you would need to select when you're importing from Photoshop. So one of the questions on the multiple choice section of the test is gonna ask you what options you would need to select if you were to import a PSD or Photoshop file into Illustrator and still make the layers editable. So we're going to practice that. I'm going to hit Command O to open a Photoshop file. So you can see that this is set to PSD format. I'm going to click Open. 
and it's going to show me this panel that allows me to select from different options based on what I want to do with this Photoshop file. So in order for my layers to still be editable, I need to make sure that the option that says convert layers to objects is selected. If I have the option that says flatten layers to a single image selected, the Photoshop layers will not be editable within Illustrator. It's going to show as just one flat raster image. If the test tells you what to do for hidden layers, then you want to make sure that you check off the little option that says import hidden layers so that even if the layers are temporarily hidden in Photoshop, you're still able to see them in Illustrator. But the most important part is to make sure it says convert layers to objects so that when you click OK and open up the layers panel within Illustrator, each of the layers that you had created within Photoshop are now fully editable as vector objects within Illustrator. Well designers, we're at the end of the video. I hope you found those five different topics to help you pass the multiple choice part of the Adobe Illustrator certification test to be useful. If you would like to access the practice files as well as slightly more in-depth video tutorials for these topics as well as several others, I recommend that you check out my Teachers Pay Teacher Store the name for which is Designed to Perfection. In this store, I have several Adobe Illustrator study guides in addition to study guides for several other Adobe certification tests, including Photoshop and InDesign. That includes several different practice files and more in-depth video tutorials to assist you in passing the certification tests. The practice files used in this video are available in the Adobe Illustrator 2023 multiple choice certification practice guide. If you purchase this product, you can download a PowerPoint file with several different sample questions and prompts, as well as a practice file that you can download in order to follow along an Illustrator and a video tutorial that shows you in depth how you would go and use either of those tools, as well as several different suggestions for how you guys can pass that section of the certification test. The link for this product, as well as several other products within my TPT store, is going to be included in the description bar of this video. Thanks again for watching. I hope you can check out my TPT store, as well as several other videos that I have for Adobe certification here on this channel. Until next time, peace out.